Tripoli had a population of 10,000 in 1830. The decade before the Great Famine reduced Ireland's population from 8 million to half that figure. A million died and 3 million emigrated on subsidised fares to North America. The landlords wanted new tenants at higher rents. And moving on to 1955, the population of Tralee still remained at 10,000. Absentee landlords meant no new housing except where slums were cleared and rebuilt. In the 20th century, there was some good work done in Tralee with public housing. Castle Countess is a scheme of 31 homes built on council-provided sites in the early 1930s. The Mitchell's housing scheme scheme started in 1937. The standard of house to replace the old Irish cottage was inadequate. Outer walls were four inches thick, mass concrete, with tongue and groove partitioning only between the bedrooms. Water was provided to the kitchen sink and to an outdoor toilet. That was also inadequate. A better vision of housing needs was provided by famous architect and town planner Arthur Gibney with the development of St. Brendan's Park. The provision of open lawns in front of the homes did not find favour initially. Purchase schemes allowed tenants to become owners. That resulted in pride of ownership and improvement works. In the past 20 years, public housing standards of design and construction are on par with the best available by private developers. New buildings have grown up around the old. Factories, hotels and shopping centres have come and some of them have gone. The most important imposing buildings in Tralee remain from the 1800s. These include Christian churches which have been added to by a mosque at Kilarisk. The first big change in Tralee came with the building of the Mount Brandon Hotel in 1965. It had the biggest bar and the biggest dining hall of any hotel in Ireland. So Tralee changed from being a market town for farm produce to being an industrialised centre. The opening of this hotel marked the end of Tralee's role as a market town. It is now a tourist destination, a conference centre location and a tourist holiday centre for opening into the west of Kerry. The opening of Farnford Airport in 1969 allowed me to document the structural changes of the town from the air. One of the most recognisable and still one of the most impressive public buildings in Tralee is the Ash Memorial Hall, called after Thomas Ash, one of the heroes of the Republic. It was opened in March 1928. Currently, it's a county museum and previously served as county library, ballroom and cinema. Tralee's town park was 75 acres. It has been trimmed down a bit for some educational buildings and it's still a fine public space. The industrial manufacturing base in Tralee lasted until 1990, when it gradually reduced. In its place came a new institute of technology and a high-tech industrial park. Almost all the work units in the park are indigenous and are at the cutting edge of technology. A few have won world renown. With higher incomes and more money, Tralee attracted national and international retailers, and some have very large competitive food stores. Tralee has an out-of-town shopping centre, yet the town centre has maintained its trading attraction. Tralee developers have provided new hotels, apartments and houses. So when the recession of 2010 ends, there should be a fast start to new growth with over 50% of the workforce having third level qualifications.
I've lived in Trilly all my life and photographed many changes. When I started my photography business in the 1950s, I could tell by their accent the Trilly Street in which people lived. The town is still small enough for everyone to know most of the residents. But day by day its population is growing and is much more mixed with migrants from many countries in Europe and Africa.